He used to serve the people and then he used to be in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night. So no part was for himself. And this same tarbiyah was given to the Sahaba, especially the Khulafa that came after him. They learned from that tarbiyah. So this is the benefit of sitting with people of Allah. This is the benefit of sitting with people whose hearts are polished with the remembrance of Allah. With the love of Allah, with the love of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They benefit, they get that tarbiyah from them. It brushes off. Those people who stay away, even in learning the deen, stay away from people who try to learn deen themselves from books or at home, over the internet. <coughs> they might get the knowledge, but they will never get the tarbiyah with them. They never get that adab with it, that respect with it. They will never be able to understand the wisdom behind it. This is why whenever prophets were sent, they were given the knowledge of the book and they went to teach the book. But with it, they taught hikmah, they taught wisdom. How to apply that book in your amr. And then at the same time, him. So to learn the knowledge, then to act upon that knowledge, but then when you zakhi him, then to purify yourselves with that knowledge. That's why the prophets came. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Ithu Allima came as a teacher. So Abu Musa al-Ashari, he was from amongst those people who benefited from the company of Rasulullah ﷺ. And so in this hadith, he narrates from the Prophet ﷺ that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ That the example, or you can say the similarity, the similitude of a person who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember his Lord مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّدِ the example is like the living and the dead. So in other words, the one who remembers his Lord, he is like a living person, and the one who doesn't remember his Lord is like a dead person. And in the hadith of Imam Muslim, Barawah Muslim Fakal, Imam Muslim reports that the Prophet said, Mathal al-bayt al-ladhi yudhkarullahu feeh that the similitude of the houses in which Allah is remembered and the houses in which Allah isn't remembered is like the living and the dead. So in the first hadith which has been reported by Imam Bukhari, the Prophet said about the person, if he doesn't remember Allah, then he is like a dead person. If he remembers Allah, he is like a living person. So a person may think that I have health, I have strength, I'm young, I have all the wealth, I have all the luxuries of life, I'm enjoying life. That person might be thinking I'm enjoying, I'm living. But if he doesn't remember Allah, Allah is actually saying you may be living outwardly but inside you're dead. Your heart is dead. You're like a dead person walking around. Because the whole purpose of life is what? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The whole purpose of life is to worship worship. يَا أَيُّ النَّاسُ حُضُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمُ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أَلَّا كُمْ تَتَّهُونَ O people who worship and love and create you. So that's the purpose of life. To worship Allah, to remember Allah. So if a person isn't remembering Allah, then they are not fulfilling the purpose. So their living is <coughs> purposes. Living is pointless. So they are like a, a dead person. But the one who remembers Allah, even though they may not have the outward living, the outward, outward enjoyments, they may not have the luxuries of life, but they are the ones actually living their life because their hearts are alive. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran in many places about people, about non-believers, about mushrikeen, about the people who did not te take heed from the Holy Quran, from the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu Even though they were living, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares them to dead people. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned summum bukmun umyun fawm la yarjiun even though people can speak but Allah says they can't speak even though they can hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they are not listening even though they can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying wala yusirun they don't have any sight they can't see why? because the heart is not alive so when your heart stops beating and you die all of your other aza all of your other body parts also stop working. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَطَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَإِشَاوَةٍ That these people, because their hearts are dead, their hearts are sealed, nothing is affecting the heart. For example, when you go to hospital, and when you're in hospital and your heart beat, when it finishes, sometimes they give you that electric shock to bring it back. So in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is these people, their hearts are sealed, those that don't remember Allah, that don't um, have hidayah, that have not benefited from uh, the Qur'an or the Prophet that have not taken heed, their hearts are sealed, even if you give that shock to them, nothing, because it's sealed. خَطَمَ اللَّهُ وَلَا قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِمْ Even their hearing is also sealed. Because their hearts are dead, even if you speak to them, they're not listening. While I'm sorry, Murishawa, and upon their eyes is a veil. There's a covering over their eyes. Even if Hidayah is there, even if uh, guidance is in front of them, but they still can't see it because there's a veil. Another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثم قصد قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهيق الهجارة أو أشد قصوى that those people who are away from Allah's remembrance, those people who are in, in ghafla, in neg neglectfulness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says their hearts are like hijara, like rocks, like stones. Oh, ashabu kaswa. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes um, one step further and says, no, they are actually more severe than rock. They're more severe and hard than a stone. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes ahead to say in that same verse that there's some rocks that sometimes water comes out of it. Rivers flow from the waters. Sometimes springs flow from those waters, uh, from those rocks. So even though there are rocks in the dunya, but they are not hard as the heart. Because sometimes water comes out of those rocks, sometimes springs and rivers come out, out of those, they gush forth. But the heart is so hard and it's like a rock when it forgets Allah that nothing can penetrate it. Nothing can penetrate it. And this is why we see in this dunya now that even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us humans, but we are worse than animals. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that in um, Surah Anbiya where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَلَقَدْ ذَعْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبُ اللَّا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts but they have no understanding. وَلَهُمْ عَمْيُنُ اللَّا يُبْسِرُونَ بِهَا They have eyes but they cannot see. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hearing that they have ears but they do not listen. So the hearts are so hard that we have no more mercy for each other left. We have no more compassion for each other left. And we see the recent case that has been going around and see in the news in Pakistan that a poor woman that was killed by her own family, her own father, her own brothers killed her. There was no compassion and mercy. In broad daylight, no one helped. No compassion, no one, because hearts have become hard. The heart has become hard because it's away from Allah, it's away from the remembrance of Allah, it's away from the being, it's in khafla, it's in neglectfulness. And because it's in neglectfulness, it's become hard like a rock. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there. The Prophet says, The ones who remember Allah and the ones who don't, they are like dead people and they are like living people. There's a hadith in Tirmazi Sharif, Imam Tirmazi narrates this, reports this hadith which Imam Qurtubi has mentioned uh, in his tafsir that the people who speak a lot, they speak a lot, but they don't remember Allah, their hearts are hard like a rock. And they are the people that are most away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They speak all day, they sit in gatherings, they socialize with friends, 
but they don't remember Allah, they don't speak about Allah, they don't talk about Allah, they don't dhikr of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said they are, the mo- they are the most furthest away from Allah and their hearts are hard like a rock. So the Prophet ﷺ said. And the hadith in uh, Muslim is a mathal bayti ladi yudkarullahu fi the houses in which Allah is remembered. <laughs> and in the houses in which Allah is remembered, they are also like what? Mathal Hayyu and Mayyid. They are also like living houses and like dead houses. So in the houses where there is no mention of Allah, where the mother and father, the parents are not teaching the children about the deen, where there's no salah being read in the house, where there is no Quran read in that house, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يَتَّخِذُوهَا قُبُورًا And do not make your houses into graveyards. And take your salahs into your houses. Pray some of your salah in your house, your nawafil, your sunnah, pray them in the houses so that they don't turn into graveyards. They don't become haunted. This is why we complain about black magic in the houses, we complain about jinns in the houses, we complain about evil eye in the houses. That's because we've invited shaitan in there ourselves. By saying Allah's name, shaitan runs away. If you give adhan, the shaitan runs away. You read Surah Al-Baqarah, shaitan runs away. You read Adhan Kursi, shaitan, the devils, they run away. We recite Quran, shaitan runs away. But because we've left these things in our houses, they're like graveyards. We have problems in our houses. But in the houses in which there is Quran, there is Salah, there is everything, there is Nur, it's living because the angels descend in that house. There's angels that are protecting that house. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oftenly in every gathering we are in, whether we are at home, whether we are with friends, whether we are in the masjid, whichever place we are in or whatever situation we find ourselves, let's not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If our tongues are not remembering Him, at least our heart should be remembering Him.